Zack Snyder's cinematic wet dream. Nonsensical, self-indulgent, kind of a clusterfuck. I couldn't recommend it anymore. Didn't grow up in the 90s, nor am I a skater boy, so this was just okay for me. Wally and Eve have better on-screen chemistry than most romantic comedy couples. When a movie's three hours long but feels like 90 minutes, you know it's a masterpiece. Society. Great concept, bad movie. This feature-length Twilight Zone episode was pretty good. On one hand, you have a below-average family action movie. On the other hand, you have Vin Diesel fighting ninjas and doing the Peter Panda dance. I am convinced that no movie would give me as much anxiety as this one. Never mind. I should just keep my mouth shut. As about as close as you can get to a perfect movie in my opinion. This movie cost 65 million dollars to make. Come on now, it's Pulp Fiction. Literally anything that can be said about this movie has already been said. This movie makes absolutely no sense if you think about it for more than a sec. But hey, at least it looks nice. I get why some people think this is Tarantino's worst. The pacing's a bit slow. I can see how some of the characters may come off as annoying. But damn, those last 20 minutes. Kind of a precursor to Stranger Things? Unfortunately, it lacks what makes Stranger Things so great. Such as interesting characters, for example. This was the last movie I saw in theaters before the pandemic happened. And to be frankly honest with you, I was more afraid of the people coughing in front of me than the actual movie. It was still good though. Did you honestly think a movie titled Titanic 2 wasn't going to be anything but dog shit? Same applies here. Why does the high school in this film look like a medieval castle? Probably one of the best romantic comedies ever made. This movie tried so hard to be the next Deadpool, and it kind of fails. A great look at the uglier side of Orlando, but that ending was just, uh, nah. Tony Collette was robbed of an Oscar. Phoebe Kate's character's monologue about her dead father is probably one of the most bizarre scenes in any movie. Hmm, what an interesting mukbang that was. I cannot put into words how much I f***ing love this movie. <sighs> Let's be honest, the only reason us Zoomers look back on this movie with such fond memories is because of a handful of songs. Unfortunately, most of the movie is boring and is a ripoff of Grease. No, seriously. The original script of High School Musical was intended to be a Grease 3, so take that as you will. Some might say style over substance. Others might say the style is the substance. I say, why not both? The Melt With You cover that's in this movie? F***ing bop. You know what, I'm sick and tired of people pretending like Spider-Man 2 isn't the best superhero movie. Before this movie came out, I always got this movie and Knives Out confused with each other. Most underrated movie of last year. Hold up, you dig on multiverses? It's a good horror movie, don't get me wrong. It's just a little too cliche for my taste. It runs a bit long, but I couldn't think of a better way to end phase three of the MCU. I don't know why, but this movie always makes me feel warm inside. I bet you forgot this movie even existed. Truly a lightning in a bottle scenario when it comes to making the perfect comedy. This woman really had time to put her face mask on when being chased by a demon. That's dedication. The fact that the studio gave Robert Rodriguez $35 million to make this is insane. Probably one of the only people who think the first half is better than the second half. Great on first watch, absolute masterpiece on second watch. When I was younger, I used to think Spider Pig was the funniest shit. The showdown at the House of Blue Leaves is probably my favorite action scene of all time. Not as good as the first, but still a good second half to the story. A part of me wants to step on Suet Little with my size 12 Tims. Another part of me wants to give him a hug, if that was humanly possible. Why does this movie exist? I mean the channel name is based off of this movie, so how could it not be a 10 out of 10?